Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we got an exciting episode for you as we're planning on going down to Sarasota, Florida to visit Jeff Ray at Hefner Performance and drop off the welding cart and see some of the goodies he has down there for us. But before we head down there, let me ask you a question. Do you shower? Do you shave? Do you scrub your ass? I know I do. But like some of you, I have a helper that smells like a bag of smashed Yo, Jason. Not now, Mike, I'm shooting a video. Well, good thing today's episode is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to help you look, feel, and smell your best. Finding the best products is hard and unnecessarily expensive. But luckily, Dollar Shave Club makes it easy. They have top shelf products that are delivered to your door on your own schedule. Shower products, butt wipes. Yes, butt wipes. Oral care products, skin care products, and obviously shaving products. Basically, if you have a body, they have you covered. Dollar Shave Club knows that your face deserves only the best. Get everything you need for a clean face and a great shave with their all new $5 starter set. You'll receive their executive razor handle, a cassette of four razors, a one ounce tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter, a one ounce tube of their Hawaiian ginger face cleanser. For obvious reasons, my favorite product so far is the Hawaiian ginger face scrub. Rumor has it, it's made from real gingers. Real gingers? Join the club with one of their starter sets for just $5. After that, the restock box sends regularly sized items at regular prices. Get this exclusive deal today at dollarshaveclub.com backslash weld. Seriously, do it. Please. All right, well, Man Cup spends the rest of the day scrubbing his ass. We're gonna head down to Sarasota and do some welding. Hey guys, we're down here in Sarasota, Florida at Hefner Performance to drop off the weld cart. And Jeff Ray's got a little project he's working on, uh, intercooler for our R8. So Jeff, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about what you got here. We got uh, some aluminum welding we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna fill in the side piece here. We'll show you how to make a template, break that out, transfer it over, weld it inside and out, get this side as well on the charge side, fill in these spots, get it tacked together, and test fit it on the car, make sure everything on it works well. And you said these things will handle up to about 1,000 horsepower? Yeah, these are the Garrett air to water, 1,000 horsepower cores, so. If you're ready, man, let's get to it. Yeah. So basically, I mean, this is, this is the piece you're looking for. This is what you're fabricating. So how do you go about making something like this? You know, kind of explain to the viewers the process you go through. I take a manila folder, piece of cardboard, uh, anything pretty flimsy. I'll lay that on there and make indicator marks and break it out and make it out of paper first. Transfer that to the sheet metal and get a degree finder when I go to break it to uh, get all the bends accurate to, to fit. Why don't you go ahead and walk us through that process? All right. So I like to start with the square edge and uh, come at the first bend here to the triangle piece and I'll locate those, break it out, trim it if need be, make two more marks and then I'm gonna break the top here, locate the other points where it needs to get trimmed and the uh, same thing with the bottom. And then you just kind of mark out all your bends as you're going. Yep, mark them out, bend it, and you can hold the piece here and uh, as we go along doing it, make sure it all fits. This will be our final template here. So I noticed you got some holes along your brake lines. You kind of want to explain your... Yeah, so uh, I'll show you that when we go to transfer it here. So we're going to transfer our design here to the sheet metal. I like to start on a square edge, just one less cut I got to make. We're going to go around the perimeter first so I can uh, tape it down afterwards. And I like to take a center punch and uh, along all my brake lines here, and I'll transfer those using the center punch so I know where to break it at. That's our piece. We'll take it to the bandsaw, cut it out, break it. All right, so you got everything laid out. <clears throat> you got a cut out on the saw. 
bent everything on the pan and brake. I noticed you're using the, uh, the, the T-bevel a lot. You want to talk about that a little bit, how you're getting your angles? and? Yeah, I use this to, to find my angles at first, and then if you, how you've seen when I was breaking the things out, I used it also as my stop so I know where to break. I broke one out, got it all dialed in. That way I'm not guessing as much on the second one. So then I have something to reference off of better um, than out in the air, as you've seen before. Right, so your left and right side, they're just mirror images of one another. Yep, yep. Okay, so now you're gonna go ahead and weld this up. What type of aluminum are you you working on? We got 6061 eighth inch aluminum here. Um, and what type of filler metal are you gonna use to weld it up? 4043, I use 116th uh, Tackett 332 to weld it out with. Usually run about 123 amps on this stuff. Uh, 332 tungsten. It's good to uh, get the machine dialed in. Go ahead and watch you run this. I'm gonna just fuse this first tack here. I only got two hands, so try to get a fuse tack, and then I'll add wire onto the rest of them and put some more wire into that one. Flip it over and hold her in. All right, so you're all tacked up. You're just going to go into welding now? Uh, we're going to weld it on the inside. We'll get the inside welded first, and then I like to tack the whole thing together, and then I'll do all the outside seams. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and change my torch tip just to be able to reach down in there better. Okay. So these modular TIG rigs here, they unthread. You can unthread the flex here as well if you wanted a stiff one or a valve. You can put those in as well. Okay. Gonna get rid of this number nine. Put a 17 torch on there. I'll give, give a little bit more body. reach. Yep. I can get in there. <laughs> the smaller torch prevents me from getting in there as deep. So this one really helps. Now we're gonna weld her out from the inside out. All right. All right, so you got like a specific way you do this that's kind of, you know, better for you or kind of like some habits you develop while you're doing this? Um, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna tack all my corners. That way when I, I weld through them a lot easier and I know I got a nice tie in You in got a little corners. more meat in the corners and yeah, stuff? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I'm going to go through, tack off all these inside corners and then we'll start welding it out. Cool. All right, so you got the interior portion of the intake done, and now we're going to go ahead and do the interior of the discharge, right? Yes. And then you'll do the final weld out on the exterior once you get it all fit up on the, uh, the water cooler. Correct. Okay. So let's uh, we'll go ahead and get, get you set up, and then we'll go ahead and swap these out. All right. All right, so you got the inside done. What are you gonna What are you gonna go through now? I got all I could with the the pencil torch here, so I'm gonna switch back to the 90 degree angle one, and I'll get in from the inside of here and get this inside, and as well as come up. This okay, way come up those little me. ramps. Yep. So I gotta say, man, that torch just being able to switch those parts in and out versus you know swapping over an entire torch, just being having that you know the ability to swap that head out just for different applications. Just on the same part. I mean, you're already using three different types of heads, so that's yeah. That's it, a nice little setup. It's really handy, especially the pencil torch, which you don't really see too often. Right. A lot of guys wish they had the ability to use one, and for this being straight up it and down as it is, it, it really helps a it's lot. It's nice to get in there. There's little tight corners and you know deep spots and yeah. stuff where you can get the the filler and the torch both in there. Yeah. So you see, we're three inches deep here now in a 
four inch wide confined space as right. well. So it's pretty tight. And Nifty uh, little setup. Yep. Got both of the insides of the end tanks welded out. I'm gonna let this one cool. We're gonna get this one tacked on here. We gotta locate the blow off valves on it. We're going with a different style blow off valve than we've used in the past. So uh, we'll get the whole thing tacked together, get it clamped to the throttle bodies, get it in, in its location there. That way we can locate our uh, blow off valves, get those holes cut, weld our ferrules on the inside, and then the end tanks will be good to go. Weld the whole thing out. So you're outside. essentially just gonna break, you're gonna tag it together, get everything laid out, marked up, break it back apart, install those pieces, weld them out, and then you'll be able to do a final weld assembly. Yep, yep. Okay. So I gotta get the whole thing together so I can get these located in the car, make sure we have no clearance issues. We know this fits in the car, it's mm -hmm. just the blow off valves, which is what we're retrofitting now. Gotcha. So now we got her over here. Clamp them in with our Wiggins clamps here that we made. Uh, get the blow off valves mocked up, that way we can locate them. And, so you guys uh, actually make these pieces here? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can use other branded ones. We made our own. These button clips go in them. That way you ain't gotta use a cotter pin. Make as much as we can in house as possible. Okay. To accommodate our needs. Awesome. So now your blow off valves. They're gonna locate right here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> our mass airflow sensors are prior to the turbos, so we have to do a recirc blow off valve, so they're gonna actually tie back into the intake side of the turbo, um, as opposed to just venting atmospherically on the newer cars where the mass airflow sensors are past the turbos, mm -hmm. they don't need to recirc, so. Uh, get the ferrule here located, the blow off valve, and, uh, and we can cut those holes and Weld that ferrule in. Weld that ferrule in and okay. then that'll be it. Well, Jeff, thanks for walking us through the process, man. I really appreciate the tour. Uh, just coming out and seeing you guys, dropping off the cart for you. I, I mean, I've learned a, a lot today. I uh, hope that the viewers have too. Uh, so just, you know, thanks for having us out, walking no us through this process and everything. I look forward to seeing it once it's completed. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the video. Hit that bell notification so you guys get notifications every, every time we release a video. Uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and until next time, make every weld better than your last. All right, hey guys, welcome back to another segment of HelpMeWeld.com. Today we have special guest star Jeff Ray with us down here at Hefner Performance. Uh, so we just did the uh, aluminum inter or intercooler video, so we're going to go ahead and do a HelpMeWeld.com segment while we're here and get Jeff's opinion on some aluminum welds uh, while we're here. So we have Jeff Sanza who wants to know how to figure out how to weld this joint configuration. Um, had it welded once, but it didn't look pretty. Uh, cut it again, tried it, it's even worse. So Jeff, let's go ahead and take a look at this and let me get your thoughts. So this one's, this one's I guess, what he's trying to do right yeah, here. Yeah. And then this is what is actually happening. Pretty hard to get into that tight of an area, welding aluminum, the puddle's real big. So you're almost gonna not bridge it, but you're gonna start off bridging it. And then once you get a big puddle going, I could see it coming together a lot better. Um, him have cut it apart. It looks like it's a little dirty in there. Right. So uh, just make sure it's clean if you are gonna cut it apart. Those cutoff wheels that yeah, they, leave a lot of residual little, in there. Yep, yep. It'll get embedded in the material. So just make sure it's clean if you do try to re-weld it. And uh, so basically, good cleanup, good prep. Fill it in there, kind of make that bridge around there, get some material dropped in there because you can't get all the way into that deep yeah, groove. Yeah, you're not gonna get that initial. Mm -hmm at first so you'll get a little bridge going and then once your piece starts heating up as well it'll be easier to add more more material as well gotcha all right guys well this concludes this segment of helpmeweld.com thanks for tuning in thanks to jeff for being a guest star uh, we you. appreciate it make sure if you guys want to uh, join us and be a part of this use hashtag helpmeweld.com on instagram as well as tune into our facebook group and you can post up there so until next time make every weld better than your last ryan laughing at me <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I just seen him. He shoots all. Oh, he's I'll like a Quentin Tarantino film. I'll show